This is your daily Facts Matter update, and I'm your host, Roman, from the Epic Times. And now, right before we dive into the topic of election integrity, I want to mention that at this moment, I am in Indianapolis, and this evening, I will be going over and speaking with the Truckers Convoy, which is having a rally right down the road. If you want to watch the full coverage live, you can do so over on Epic TV. The link will be right there in the description box below. And if you use promo code ROMAN, you will get a 14-day free trial. So you don't even need to pay anything. Just click on that link, use promo code ROMAN, and you can watch everything that we're doing live without paying a dime. However, I hope that you enjoy the subscription so much that you continue and tell your friends and family. And now, let's move on over and talk about Mark. Zuckerberg. Just yesterday, over in Wisconsin, the special counsel who was appointed to study the 2020 election, he officially submitted his report, and his findings, you can say, quite frankly, are rather troubling. To start with, the special counsel, he found that the millions of dollars that Mark Zuckerberg spent on the Wisconsin election, well, they violated the state's laws in regards to election bribery. Or, to be even more specific, the almost $9 million worth of Mark Zuckerberg's grant funding, which, by the way, went exclusively to five Democratic strongholds within the state of Wisconsin, well, it violated Wisconsin Election Code's prohibition on bribery. Now, before we dive into the details of the report, let me give you a brief background on both the report as well as the Zuckerberg funding. You might remember that in August of last year, in August of 2021, the Speaker of the Wisconsin Assembly, who is a lawmaker by the name of Robin Voss, he authorized the Office of the Special Counsel, which was headed up by a retired state Supreme Court justice named Michael Gableman, to investigate all the concerns regarding election integrity that came out of the 2020 presidential race. And so again, that was in August. Then, three months later, in November of last year, the special counsel, he delivered his initial interim report to the Wisconsin Assembly. And while he was giving his update to the Assembly, he told them that, in his opinion, there, it was clear that some form of cover-up was taking place. Here's specifically what Mr. Gableman, who is again the special counsel in Wisconsin, here's what he told the Wisconsin Assembly back in November of last year. Quote, Green Bay Mayor Eric Ginrich and Madison Mayor Sataya Rhodes Conway have chosen to ignore the subpoenas issued by the Wisconsin Assembly because they have no intention of answering uncomfortable questions about what they did with the millions of dollars in Zuckerberg money that they took. Now, in that statement, as you likely noticed, Mr. Gableman mentioned millions of dollars that came from Mark Zuckerberg. And this requires a bit of context to explain. There was a report that was released by the Thomas More Society. I'll put it up on screen for you. And this report detailed how Mark Zuckerberg donated approximately $400 million in order to quote unquote help out the 2020 election. And the bulk of that money, it went to an organization that's called the Center for Tech and Civic Life, which is a nonprofit which was started by former managers as well as former staff members of another organization that's called the New Organizing Institute, which was a progressive nonprofit. And so what that means in practice is that Mark Zuckerberg donated $400 million to an organization that is both led as well as staffed primarily by Democrat activists in order to quote unquote help out the 2020 election. Now you might be wondering, because it's of course the next logical question, how exactly they were help helping out. Well, according to their official website, here's what the Center for Tech and Civic Life aims to do. Quote, we harness the promise of technology to modernize the American voting experience. What you get? High performing election offices, increased public confidence and trust, a more resilient and adaptive election system, better informed voters. Now, that of course sounds all well and good. However, what did they specifically do in order to achieve that goal in the year 2020? Well, according to this report from the Thomas More Society, what they did was that prior to the 2020 election, the Center for Tech and Civic Life, they began sending out their agents into the Democrat strongholds of different states in order to recruit the local leaders there. Then those local leaders would have would fill out and prepare grant applications, and then those applications can be sent back to the Center for Tech and Civic Life, and then the requested money would be sent right back over to the Democrat strongholds in order to help them get out the vote. And as an example of how this actually worked in practice, well, according to the report from the Thomas More Society, the Center for Tech and Civic Life, they gave $100,000, again, of Zuckerberg money to Mr. Corey Mason, who is the mayor of Racine, Wisconsin, in order to have him go to four other cities in the area. And specifically, those cities were Democrat strongholds. And in those cities, he recruited local leaders, he held them to develop a plan, and then they sent in a request to the Center for Tech and Civic Life in order for them to execute that plan. And indeed, the Zuckerberg money came rolling in. According to the report, in June of 2020, which was five months prior to the actual election, the cities of Milwaukee, Madison, Green Bay, Racine, as well as Kenosha, they submitted their plans. And then subsequently, approximately $9 million were given to them in order for them to implement those plans. Now, again, if you were a generous person, you might look at the situation and you might say, hey, you know what? This sounds like a good thing. 
The Center for Tech and Civic Life is just using Mark Zuckerberg's money in order to help out local election officials. They are subsidizing their work, they're making the elections better, and they're also saving you and me, the American taxpayers, well, they're saving us money. It sounds like a good thing. Which could have been the case in theory, but according to that report by the Thomas More Society, the money flowed overwhelmingly to Democrat strongholds at a ratio of about 10 to 1, meaning that for every $10 that went to a Democrat stronghold, only $1 went to a Republican area. Here's specifically what that earlier report from the Thomas More Society said on this front. Mark Zuckerberg's money allowed these Democrat strongholds to spend roughly $47 per voter compared to only $4 to $7 per voter in traditionally Republican areas of the state. And the question which has been hanging in the air since the year 2020 is whether any of this was actually legal. Because according to the Help America Vote Act, which you can see up on screen right there, it requires that state election plans must be submitted to federal officials for approval, specifically in regards to making sure that all the resources and all the money are available equally to all voters. And so everything that I gave you is the full background on the new report, which just dropped yesterday in Wisconsin, which, as I mentioned earlier, determined that Mark Zuckerberg's election money did in fact violate Wisconsin election laws in respect to bribery. And so what this new report says is that Mark Zuckerberg, as well as his wife Priscilla Chan, they provided financing that allowed the Center for Tech and Civic Life to, quote, offer nearly $9 million in Zug bucks to Milwaukee, Madison, Racine, Kenosha, and Green Bay counties. In exchange, the Zuckerberg Five, that's what the report calls these five counties, in effect operated Democratic get-out-the-vote efforts. Those grant funds then paid for illegal drop boxes to be placed in Democratic voting strongholds. And in regards to the drop boxes that they just mentioned in that report, well, this was another area of concern that the special counsel highlighted as well. Because according to the Wisconsin state election laws, Wisconsin citizens, by the way, otherwise known as Wisconsinites, they are limited only to casting ballots either in person or by mail, unless they have very, very special circumstances, making ballot drop boxes unconstitutional. In fact, just last month, the state Supreme Court over in Wisconsin, they upheld a ban on these drop boxes for the upcoming April elections. Although, by the way, I'll mention that that particular ban is not permanent, but it is a tacit acknowledgement by the state Supreme Court that those drop boxes are very likely unconstitutional, which is what this new report says as well. However, getting back to the topic of Mark Zuckerberg, as well as his money, well, the report goes on to say that the Zuckerberg Five, which is, again, those five different counties that took his money, they violated, quote, federal and state constitutional guarantees of equal protection. The grant money targeted specific voters for special voting privileges to the disadvantage of similarly situated voters located in other Wisconsin counties. Now, in this regard, the report went on to detail the evidence of how these five counties, they allowed private groups working with the granting organization, which is, of course, the Center for Tech and Civic Life, to, quote, unlawfully administer aspects of the election, including in one county where one organization was unlawfully embedded in local government election administration. Now, by the way, I'll also mention that there were other issues highlighted in the report as well, such as how, for one, the Wisconsin Elections Commission, they issued illegal directives which allowed local officials throughout the entire state to ignore the laws governing voting in nursing homes. We covered, by the way, this issue uh, in greater detail in a previous episode, as well as how non-citizens were allowed to remain on Wisconsin voting rolls despite the fact that it was against the law. And there were other aspects to the report as well. In fact, if you want to read the full thing in its entirety, I'll throw a link to it down in the description box below so you can go through it yourself point by point and see what they actually found. However, it is worth mentioning that the special counsel, Mr. Gableman, he is not looking to overturn the 2020 election, but rather he stressed that he wants to learn from what happened in 2020 so that illegal activities will not occur in the future. Specifically, in presenting the report to the Wisconsin Assembly, the special counsel said that it represents a quote, small step towards fulfilling the duty of all citizens of our state and our nation to work hard to secure our democracy for this generation and the next. Now, in terms of the next steps in this process, well, now that the report has been presented to the legislature, it contains concrete recommendations that they can implement to address both the problems as well as all the illegalities that we mentioned earlier, such as the Mark Zuckerberg money, the draw boxes, etc. However, in terms of whether the legislature actually has the political will to implement them, well, that is another matter, and we will just have to wait and see. Regardless, though, as I mentioned earlier, if you would like to read the report for yourself in its entirety, that way you can look through all the facts for yourself and make up your own mind, I'll throw it into the description box below this video for you to check out. And all I ask in return is that you take a super quick moment to smash, smash, smash this like button so the YouTube algorithm will be forced, well, to share this video out to countless more people.